Faced with fewer dollars to pay for teaching, school divisions are chopping schools and jobs. And as Jerry Jones reports, cutting the three R's is causing a lot of tension in once peaceful towns. A wind of change is blowing off the open prairie and through the gravel streets of Wood Mountain. This village has two grain elevators, two churches, a school, and 47 residents. We've had a horrendous spring. Mike uh, Klein is a village mayor. He's also a teacher at the local school. He's had an horrendous spring because he's fighting to keep the school open. How many haven't got their um, first page in yet? This is a K-12 school with 49 students. There are none in grade 11 and only three in grade 12. Feelings are running quite high and uh, understandably so. George Marchenko is the chairman of the school division responsible for Wood Mountain. He says they have to cut somewhere. And since Wood Mountain is the smallest of the division's five schools, it's the target. The board was reluctant, but because of the, the tightening of the, 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 fiscal, the fiscal restraints that, uh, that the board is facing, uh, especially now and in the future, uh, we do have to look at something for Wood Mountain. They have to tell the story. The school board is struggling with whether to close this school and bus students to a nearby town or just move out a few classrooms. The village, on the other hand, wants to take over the school and pay the bills. Essentially, all we're asking for is the right to, to take control. We're not asking for more money. We're not trying to put any burden on anybody else. Wood Mountain is one of about 15 schools in the province facing closure this year or the loss of one or more classrooms to another school. The people who run the school board say they have no other choice because of declining enrollments and cuts in government grants. They'll lose $7 million in government grants this year and expect to lose another 14 next year. Spring Valley has a grain elevator, a church, 21 residents, and a school. It's a K to 12, and there are 53 students. Many of them are bussed in from nearby communities. People here are on constant watch because there's been talk of closing this school for years. We do feel threatened because they're closing schools that are much larger than ours, three and four times the size of ours. Uh, Elaine Scheller is with the Provincial Association of Community and Schools. The group is trying to fight school closures. Scheller admits it's a losing battle. I think what's happening is that the centralization-minded people in governments of all stripes are saying that it's just too inconvenient for us to supervise and administrate you people when you live in rural areas. And they are really trying to push people from rural areas into big regional centers. Back in Wood Mountain, there is talk of more drastic cuts in the school division next year. So far, we have not uh, uh, gone into cutting program within the division, but we may have to do that uh, this coming year. To sum it up, there will be more empty swings swaying in the wind in school yards across the province over the next few years. <coughs> the laughter of kids playing ball during recess will be gone. Instead, they'll be bussed through the streets of their hometown to a school in another town. Some of their parents and jobs will follow. People in Wood Mountain will learn the fate of their school on the 19th of this month. Jerry Jones, CBC News, Wood Mountain. And that'll be hotly debated too when they learn of their mm -hmm. fate. Still to come, we'll have our sports update. And when we come back, the arts reel. where they keep diseases so deadly there is no cure. Yet scientists work with them every day. Next, on How They Do That. I'd like to be in business.